Alright, so in this video we're going to look at confidence intervals. And I will do uh, three intervals, I mean three videos, separate videos on confidence intervals. Uh, the first one will be uh, confidence intervals where uh, sigma is known and the next one will be where sigma is uh, unknown and then I will do one on uh, proportions. Okay, so let's get started on this one. Uh, confidence interval sigma is known. So here's the confidence interval. It's x bar minus e is less than mu, which is less than x bar plus e. Okay, so e is z sub c over sigma divided by the square root of n. So, and c is your confidence level, okay, whether it's like a 95% a confidence interval, 99% confidence interval, okay, that will be, you know, given to you. And z sub c is the critical value for the confidence level c based on the standard normal distribution. And, and let me say this, uh, C, uh, like if it's a, you know, it's between 0 and 1, so if it's a 95% confidence interval, then C would be 0 0.05, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and get started, and uh, let's take a look at the example. All right, so our first example, we say, it says, an athlete jogs two miles every day. The standard deviation of his times is sigma is 1.8 minutes. And notice here, they give us sigma. See, sigma is known. He has recorded his times over a period of 90 days. For these 90 times, the mean is x bar equals 15.6 minutes. Let mu be the mean jogging time for the entire distribution of his two mile running times. Find a 95% confidence interval for mu. All right, so the best thing to do is just is draw it. Okay, we want a 95% confidence interval. And so that means in here, in this area here, is 95%. Okay, and so that means we have... 5% left over. So this area and this area is 5%. And we know that this is symmetrical. So if we have the 0 0.05, we get 0 0.025. So this is 0 0.025, and this is 0 0.025. All right. So let's go ahead and find what we need. Well, we know E is Z sub C over sigma divided by the square root of N from our formula. All right. So let's find... Well, we know sigma is 1.8. We know n is 90. Okay, for these 90 times, there's 90 times that he recorded. And so that's 90. And now we need to find z sub c. Okay, so there is a, there's a couple ways we can do this one, the 95%. So if we pull up the standard normal distribution, okay, which we have here, okay, and let's see, that's the, I've got one here where it has the positive Z scores, and then I have another one where it has the negative Z scores, okay. Let's look at the positive. All right, now, on, on some of these standard normal curves, 
they have this chart here, confidence intervals. Okay, so for a 95%, you can see that Z sub C is 1.96. Okay, so that's that would be the easy way to find it. So Z sub C is 1.96. Okay, so let's suppose that it didn't have that little chart. Well, we would have to find it. We are looking for this value right here. Okay. So we need this z-score that has an area to the left of 0.95 plus the 0.025, which is which this total area would be 0.975. Okay, that's the that's the whole area to the left of this z-value here. Okay. So for that, we would need to come over here and we need to come in here and find 0.975. So if we're, if we're looking in here, all right, let's see. I hope you can see the numbers. So if we, we're looking for 0.975 and here, you see this? There's 0.975. And that corresponds to 1.9. See? 1.96. Okay? So there's your 1.96 for your Z sub C. That's how you would look that up. I know it's just easier to look at this, but what if they ask you to find a you know a confidence interval that's not on here? Well, that's how you would that's how you would find this critical value here. Okay. All right. So now all we need to do is come back to our problem, and we know. E is equal to Z sub C times sigma over the square root of N, which this would be 1.96 times 1.8 over the square root of 90. And that gives us 0.37. That's E. Okay. Let me erase this. All right, so now, well, now we have our confidence interval. That is going to be x bar minus e to x bar plus e. And, and I know it was written like x bar minus e less than mu less than x bar plus e. This is the same thing. I'm just putting it in an interval instead of an inequality. Okay. All right. So, so now we have x bar, which is 15.6 minus e to 15.6 plus e. And so our confidence interval would be 15.23 to 15.97. And there's our confidence interval. All right, so, so here we can say that uh, with 95% confidence, we can say that the mean jogging time mu is between 15.23 and 15.97 minutes. Okay. All right, let's do another one. Let's do an 85%. All right. 
So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and put sigma is 1.8, n is 90, uh, z sub c. And we have to find that. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this. So we know in here is 0.85. So what's left over? What's left over is 0.15. That's this area and this area add up to 0.15. So if we half that, we get 0 0.075. All right, so so we need this z value here, okay? That has an area to the left of 0.85 plus 0 0.075, which is 0.925, okay? So we have to go into our standard normal distribution table and find an area of 0.925 and see which z-score corresponds to that. All right, so let's do that. All right, so we need 0.925. Alright, so looking, let's see, well, we, ours is 0 0.925, here we have 0 0.9251, which, you know, for this, that would be close enough to get an, an accurate z-score, we would probably need to go into Excel, and I'm going to do a video uh, using Excel for for confidence intervals and I'm going to do all of them the sigma's known sigma's unknown and the proportion I'll have excel videos on that I just wanted to do some by show you how to work it out by hand and show you how to do it with excel and so you can see here that this would be 1 1.4 1 4 okay so our z sub c in this case is 1.4 Four, four. And this table, this table actually has an 85% on it, which is 1.44. Some tables won't, some tables will. Okay, this one does. But we don't need it because we know how to go in here and look it up. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. And so this is 1.44. All right, so now we get E is, remember, z sub c times sigma over the square root of n. So that's 1.44 times 1.8 over the square root of 90. And that equals, that equals 0 0.27. I just rounded to two decimal places. Okay, so now let's get our confidence interval, which is x bar minus e to x bar plus e. And so that's going to be x bar, which we remember is 15.6 minus e, which is 0.27 to 15.6 plus e, which is 0.27. And so our confidence interval is 15.33 to 15.87 and and notice that this interval is smaller than this interval okay which makes sense because this is a 95 percent confidence interval and this is an 85 see we're more confident that it's between these values so the interval's wider. And then the 85% were a little less confident. So um, I'm 
sorry. Yeah, no. So the 85% is not as wide. Okay. So if you compared the two on a number line, this would be 15.23, 15.23. Nine, seven, that's the 95, and then the 85, 15.33, 15.87. All right, you can see how this one is wider than this one. Okay, so I hope this helped. Uh, check out my other videos. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and hope this.